Power resides where men believe it resides. It's a trick, a shadow on the wall. And a very small man can cast a very large shadow. Varys from Game of Thrones defines power as whatever people perceive it to be. It's a shadow on the wall of your imagination. Power is a seductive concept that baffles most and intrigues all. How does one attain it? We are bombarded by its displays from all sides, but it remains vague and unreachable in our own minds. Well, in this video I'll share with you the six types of power described by two social psychologists, French and Raven. All of these types of power are important. They are also referred to as the basis of social power. So you must learn how all of them work. Are you finished? Well, thank you. How thoughtful. Would you like a chocolate? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Reward power. In this scene, Sheldon gives Penny a chocolate every time she does what he tells her. He's slowly training her using the concept of operant conditioning. In this case, positive reinforcement. He is successful at it. And at the end of the scene, we see Penny use the same concept on her boyfriend Leonard by offering sex in exchange of leaving the room. Reward power comes from the ability to distribute or use rewards to achieve compliance from an individual or a group. A reward could be financial like bonuses, pay trips, pay raises, or social like a thank you, quality time with someone, birthday gifts, flattery, compliments, sexual favors or authority-based like job opportunities, like a higher rank or position. The perfect reward can often depend on a person. What is valuable to one is not necessarily valuable to another. Smart people use praise in small cost but high impact rewards frequently in costly rewards quite infrequently. In this way, they don't waste their resources. First, they get people to expect the reward. That way, everyone wants to get it or be around a powerful person. Make the rewards predictable so their unconscious picks it up, aka if I convince this client to join, I will receive the best recognition Mrs. Austin has given so far, something like that. Rewards have the power of creating competition which result in high performance. The moment someone does something positive, praise them and make the words specific so they know what got them the praise. What gets rewarded? gets repeated. Also, do not reward toxic behavior. Number 2. Coercive Power In this scene, Frank Underwood uses the coercive power of threats. This is you, Abrams. And this is you, Vandenberg. Now, I'm going to say to you what I say to every congressman that sits where you're sitting now. Vote your district. Vote your conscience. Don't surprise me. And the most important one of those is don't surprise me. If they don't vote for his policy, they will face the consequences. This is called positive punishment. The Godfather uses the same concept by giving them an offer they can't refuse. You either sign, you either accept, or this happens. Coercive power is what we imagine when we think of people like our bosses, our professors, mobsters, or agents of law enforcement. Those people who have the power to punish us for our refusal to obey. We don't have to necessarily know that they hold the punishing power, only to believe that they do. You might be afraid to lose your job, children, house, membership to some club, or privileges or rights such as an annual bonus. Coercive power is what we associate with Machiavellianism. Coercive power is rooted in fear, and it involves overt or covert forms of threat, and even peer pressure. This form only works when the powerful has surveillance and is aware of the target's activities. It's coercive because it gets the person to do something against their will, which is not always effective, but can push people to do what they are asked to do. Employers often use this when someone is not doing what they're supposed to do, but not doing their job properly, and their performance is dwindling. 
In such instances, it could be an option to use. Coercive power often creates toxic environments that suppress creativity and create resentment. People who abuse this form of power are accused of being bullies and tyrants. Expert power. You better start making sense. If you want to keep all that money, give it to your wife. The IRS allows a one-time only gift to your spouse for up to $60,000. Bullshit. Tax-free? Tax-free. IRS can't touch one cent. In this scene, we see the falsely accused Andy Dufresne uses his knowledge of banking and taxes to gain the favor with the guards and even the cruel warden. Later on, he becomes indispensable to the warden because of this and gets tremendous perks that a prisoner never got in the history of such a high security prison. Be so good that they can't ignore you. That's the power of the expert. An expert is someone who has accumulated a lot of experience in a certain field and has a history of demonstrating his knowledge, expertise and sound judgment. This judgment is a source of her or his power. People listen to what they have to say. Jordan Peterson is an example of this. He is a thought leader and so many people listen to him. A solid reputation is important to an expert. Regardless of your qualifications, if your reputation is bad, people will avoid you and might even go the opposite direction. Doctors and lawyers have immense expert power because there is a disparity of knowledge between them and the average person. Keep in mind that the perception of being an expert sometimes is the only thing that is necessary. The internet is filled with fake gurus out there who use your vulnerability to sell you their courses. Expert power doesn't last forever because human knowledge progresses and technology is pushing the progress exponentially. History is filled with experts who ruin their power because they believe in it too much or they ignore the other bases. Like Nikola Tesla. The fault of experts is that they forget to take in the opinions of others. Learn a skill and try to become the best at it. Legitimate power. In this scene, the senator uses his position as a politician to give Michael Corleone a gaming license for his casinos. He can do so because his political power is legitimate in the eyes of the law. LP is the use of one's own rank, position in a company, army, institution to create compliance with one's own will. It's called legitimate because the power was won by being hired, elected or appointed by someone of a higher rank or committee or the people. The person with legitimate power has serious and real responsibilities to attain to. For example, an employee cannot directly go against the wishes of a CEO and still keep their job. LP is situational, it's not transferable. A president cannot order you to not to play video games. Well, unless you are in China. Chain of command is essential to an organization as well. And people with LP simply cannot skip the chain of command. LP is gained through rising through the ranks and it takes time to build. It's the most general basis of power known. If you have LP, don't abuse it. If you want to play the long game, that is. Some LP positions are temporary, hence why a person should add to their other bases of power. A president is only a president for four years or eight. When the time comes, they leave. Number five, referent power. Elon Musk situated himself as the leader of change and it got him tremendous referent power that translated into becoming the richest man in the world. This is the power of the liking principle. People are swayed by those they like and find charming and charismatic. A person with referent power will be seen as a role model, someone to be respected and imitated. Their opinion is heard not because of their rank, but their relationship with others in how they are perceived. You can build this power by delegating autonomy to others, entrusting their intakes. Celebrities like Russell Brand have referent power because he is used as a model of struggle against addiction adversity, and as a model of social connection. This is why advertising agencies use celebrities in promoting products. They borrow their referent power. This is called killed with a borrowed knife. Referent power is about being identifiable. If you can gain rapport with others, reflect their values and ideas, convince them that you are similar, you will attain it. 
You can gain people's respect and admiration by doing the hard thing, like standing against criticism, standing against something wrong, or facing some type of fear. As mentioned earlier, finding how to create a change in some situation around you will gain you referent power. Ask yourself, what needs changing and how can I do it? Oprah Winfrey was able to create a large following and make or break a lot of icons, writers, politicians and artists and actresses who had varied levels of the same referent power because of her ability to connect with the other. Learn how to connect with others. Being the master of whispers with tons of spies on his payroll, Varys obviously has tremendous informational power that lets him know his enemy's plans and intentions and see who is doing what from a mile away. This is the last form of power and it was added later on by the same social psychologist, Raven. IP is about controlling information, its flow, its sources, it's about getting your hands on the intel that others need to achieve a certain task or complete a certain objective. The difference between this form of power and others is that it disappears after the person chooses to divulge a piece of information. Let's say you know who is the rat in a group. The moment you share that information, you can't use it any further. This is why it's key to know when to use it specifically know the best time to cash in on your knowledge. Informational power can be insanely powerful and it can be used personally or sold to the highest bidder. Facebook and Google have immense informational power on us, the public, as individuals. They can access our search history, watch history, know what we think, our tastes, our preferences, the people we talk to, and so much more inform a personality profile of who we are. The informational power can be improved by learning how to get people to talk to you. In The Art of War, Chapter 12, on Spice, Sun Tzu considers information as the most vital element of war. Learn which type of power you have. Do the same thing to others. In a workspace, as a normal employee, you might only have referent power. You can use that to enhance your other bases, use how people perceive you and get them to like you, then learn more information from them. You can use that info to get a raise or to change departments or whatever, depending on the thing that you know. Slowly build your power by improving all six bases. It's also key to know which one you have most of and which ones you specifically need to improve or need for that specific thing or task. Try to use this information to build your personal power and don't forget to enhance people's lives in the process. Toxic environments will affect you in the long run and curb your ambitions or gain you unnecessary enemies. To sum up, there are six types or bases of power. Reward power, coercive power, legitimate power, referent power, informational power, and finally, expert power. Stay sharp.